All right. So good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome. I uh, just wanted to extend our thanks for attending our uh, webinar today. Uh, today's webinar is uh, part of a series of webinars that um, 360 Energy is going to be presenting to keep uh, greenhouse owners and operators informed of the many changes, including risks and opportunities occurring in the energy and uh, greenhouse industries. Um, so just a bit of a background on us. Uh, for over 25 years, 360 Energy has been a trusted advisor to growers, helping them to optimize their expenditures in energy. We're not tied to any product or service brands. We work directly for you. Uh, we're the nexus between energy markets, vendor relationships, technology app applications, and engineered solutions. Uh, at minimum, our clients see a three to one return on their investment when they work with us. Um, since 1995, we've established valuable working relationships with key participants in the greenhouse industry to help our clients assess factors impacting energy markets um, and infrastructure planning for both current and future needs. Um, as I mentioned, this is going to be a part of a series of webinars that we'll, we'll be presenting. Uh, future topics that we're going to be looking at uh, include uh, maximizing use of outdoor solar energy, uh, efficient con conversion of heat storage and reuse, uh, and replacing fossil fuel by other renewable energy resources. Um, just a few housekeeping items um, before we get uh, started here today. I just wanted to uh, remind and let everybody know that we do keep everybody muted during these presentations, just to cut down on background noise so everybody is able to clearly hear the presenter. Um, we do have some uh, a question function in the um, in the uh, the uh, webinar um, device here. So if you do have a question, please uh, feel free to write that question out, ask us, and then we can uh, most definitely um, get those questions read out and get them answered for you. So we'll be monitoring that during the presentation. Um, but again, we're keeping everybody muted just to uh, to keep down on background noise. Um, today's presentation is going to be right around 40 to 45 minutes, and we're going to have some time at the end for questions. So please do ask those questions. Um, and without further any further ado, I'm pleased to present David Arkell, who's the president and CEO of 360 Energy, who's going to take us through the uh, webinar today. Thank you, Dave. Thanks so much, Julie, for the introduction and um, good day to everyone. Uh, this presentation is for greenhouses throughout North America. Uh, certainly we'll be using content from information that we have readily available for us, but uh, it is suited from people from uh, California to people to Nova Scotia. So thank you very much. And um, uh, let's get going because we've got a lot of material to cover. Uh, I think Julie has, did a great job sort of introducing ourselves just uh, about who 360 Energy is. Uh, maybe something specific that you might find interesting and what drives us in the business that we do and why we're in the greenhouse industry. So I, uh, I personally have, uh, my, have been in the agriculture sector uh, since I was born. My family uh, was in food processing. We had our own business. And so I understand uh, the challenges in running your own business, but also uh, that some of the challenges in the agriculture sector. Uh, truthfully, uh, the greenhouse industry is, tends to be driven by entrepreneurs. Uh, so I understand that culture and what drives you and, and what needs to be done and how you're pretty well lean on what you need to, uh, what you have available to. So I'm hopeful that the material that we cover now and in future webinars will be helpful to you going forward. And um, as indicated, we're focusing on energy uh, and carbon. Uh, understand that you, that greenhouses use carbon, but in the, there'll be more discussions on how carbon will impact energy markets, which will impact you. So let's get on with it. So let's just uh, discuss sort of 360 energy and how our, what drives our organization. Quite frankly, everything starts with the customer. And that means we need to understand who the customer is, where they're located, the infrastructure that they have, their growing techniques. Once we fully understand that information and not one greenhouse is the same, not one greenhouse operator operates the same, then we drive a strategy and implement a strategy that actually can help them achieve measurable savings. And 
And you know, and have experienced in the past, and I think even more so, changes are going to be occurring. But we're looking at holistic approach from natural gas to electricity to uh, CO2 that you use within your organization and water and wastewater, which will be even more of an issue going forward. So we're looking at how those are all integrated within your organization, how you can maximize using them to maximize your production. So certainly the challenges uh, associated in the greenhouse industry, typically utilities represent 20 to 30% of your production cost. It's the second largest input cost to the organization, even though perhaps uh, natural gas costs have been pretty low in the last few years, uh, but certainly it, it's, it's, it's a major input cost. At the same time, we know the greenhouse industry is changing dramatically. Uh, we know the size of the greenhouses are changing, so they're now getting bigger. There's less smaller organization. There's, there tend to be more of a, an aggregate of larger customers. Oh, and the amount of energy you use. And then because of all those changes uh, and, and your requirements for energy, it also impacts the infrastructure required, whether you're buying from the grid or behind the fence. And so there's a lot of different uh, variables that need to be considered. And, and truthfully, uh, for a greenhouse operator to understand those and put those all together is quite challenging. Um, just like when you have, uh, you use a grower consultant and you help you as you and your growing, there's a need and value of having an energy consultant and, and to a service provider to help you in this whole process. And that's the work we do. So let's just talk about uh, some of the information that we know and how energy is impacting and how it in the greenhouse industry. I want to reference, this is a source from the independent electrical uh, systems operator here in Ontario. Uh, I know there's greenhouses from BC to Nova Scotia, uh, but we're referencing the material that we have from Ontario just because this information is made available. In this slide here, you can actually see the amount of energy consumed from different greenhouse growers. And, and clearly, uh, it looks like in, in the gold that natural gas is a, is a large consumer, which should be no surprise to people at all. Uh, yet, in you, if you look now in the gray where, where there's electricity, traditionally has not been a big area of focus with greenhouses. They've used it for uh, you know, irrigation, fans, pumps, uh, but things are changing dramatically in the greenhouse industry based on some of the requirements from your marketers. And then uh, flowers as well, there's, there's, you can see how electricity plays a bigger part in their situation. Uh, I, what I wanna convey in the next slide is, even though um, you can see that, that natural gas is a large, large part of the amount of energy consumed, uh, we are seeing electricity becoming more dominant. So, so, uh, and, and so when you look at the consumption on its own, you would think, well, uh, gas is a predominant cost so associated with it, but actually that's not true. We're finding the ratio using these numbers as far as consumption by greenhouse is that uh, electricity tends to be three times three to two times the cost of natural gas. And so greenhouse operators might feel that they're very comfortable. They've been looking and working in the greenhouse environment and the natural gas environment for a long time. But now electricity is coming through and it's a new way of managing and, and uh, a new field, which there's not a lot of people that can assist you in that area. And that's an area of focus that we're spending. Uh, you can certainly see the, 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 the growth, but also the, the factors that are changing. You can see here vegetables, flowers, greenhouse cannabis, and indoor cannabis. Uh, one thing that we all know, and I think there's some people online here, is the cannabis industry is coming on, certainly in Canada. We expect it to come on very shortly in the U.S. And so the demands for energy and specifically power will be an issue that has to be considered as well. So um, it's, it's not uncommon that uh, often we, we're... Customers uh, or potential customers are calling us and asking a variety of questions because they, they just don't have the, the information or the knowledge base. So, you know, 
uh, in the past, we've been working with a lot of greenhouse operators that are currently uh, operating at one site or two sites. We're now finding we're getting contacted by growers that are building new greenhouses and they need some help to help identify where they should locate it, what, how they, what equipment they should be using and how they can maximize it. So there's a variety of questions that certainly play a factor for, for a greenhouse. And that's just one list and, and here's some more. Lighting is, is certainly a, a factor more dominant. So what does that do to you? How do you operate? What's the best rates to be on? Uh, if I'm going to have uh, some changes to my or black oak curtains, how does that work? And, and et cetera. Uh, you'll note here that a lot of, we'll even get customers saying, look, my neighbor's doing this. Do you think I should be doing the same thing too? And, and the answer to that is that there's not one greenhouse that is the same, even though you might be at the same location. So structures are different. Growing techniques are different grower requirements and operating conditions are quite frankly different. So I'm, I'm going to encourage you and, and suggest that just because a grower down the road did this, you really want to take a sober thought of what you should do just because they did that. Is it something that you should follow or what can, can you do to actually help optimize that? So um, I want to say to you, and I should have said this right at the beginning, it's our opinion that energy is completely controllable. And um, many people that may be online uh, may not think that to be so, but we've, uh, we embed a, a process within the organization so that you as an organization can actually understand where you are, where you wanna go and achieve measurable savings. So this slide in particular, which is very critical, is a function of, you know, what are you growing? What's your, what's your infrastructure set up at? And we believe this is a team game. This isn't a one person's job. This requires the grower, it requires the owner, it requires the accountant to be involved in this process. So we don't think energy is a project. We think it's a management process. And when you put this management process in place, there are measurable savings and and to from the extent of the work we've done in this area since 2011 we have found that uh, customers there's best in class and that they and there's others the others they tend to spend or, or use 25 percent more utilities than the other parties and they tend to spend 10 to 15 percent more on their purchasing of that energy. So there's a lot of opportunity to go right to the bottom line for organizations if you know what you're doing. So the summary is energy is controllable if you put the right processes in place within your organization. And so we're going to go through this today so you have a better understanding. The first thing that customers really, really need to understand is how do you use energy? And and, and then what, what are your costs when you're looking at energy? What drives your costs? Those two ingredients have to go hand in hand. They can't work in isolation, which most customers do. They, they tend to, when they're speaking to people, help they'll focus on equipment suppliers that help reduce the energy use. And then they'll speak to a commodity player that just focus on costs. They actually work hand in hand. So when you, when you do them in tandem and understand them in tandem, you can start coming up with a strategy and, and implement a strategy that achieves measurable savings. So allow me to, this, this gives you a, a summary of where electricity is being consumed uh, by different equipment within a greenhouse. And you'll, in this particular slide, you'll see they have it broken down by a vegetable greenhouse, flowers, uh, greenhouses for cannabis and indoor. So it's quite diverse. And, and certainly uh, lighting is a dominant factor, but, and, and that's a, a real interest and a concern to customers as it should be. But I want you to know the other and the irrigation and circulation pumps, they all are impacted by lighting. And so looking at lighting in isolation, just on its own and not understanding the impact it has to the rest of the organization or the rest of the utilities, um, it may be, you might be losing opportunities. So you need to look at the whole thing holistically and how it impacts each other. 
when we now look at the, uh, we, we know when we work with customers, we actually establish KPIs and we want to know where energy is being used. Uh, and that gives the grower uh, and an understanding where their starting point is and where they want to go. Uh, in, in this particular example, you can see where uh, lighting intensity, how it, its impact on the kilowatt hours per square foot. Um, so it does give you a sort of a benchmarking of what is happening in Ontario. That doesn't necessarily mean that's true in British Columbia or in California, but the, what I want to convey to you is you really need to understand where your energy uh, is being used and who's what, what equipment is using it. And so when that information's uh, available, you can start doing things which we'll talk about. So um, energy on its own is, is, is fine, but effectively you're in the business of, make, of producing product. So when we talk to customers, many times they think, oh, you're gonna just, you, you might save energy, but you're gonna mess up my production. And, and that's furthest from the truth. We actually want to actually increase and enhance your production, but also optimize your energy usage. And it can be done in tandem. Uh, not many people actually understand that or figure that out, but it can be done and it can be done quite economically. So, so you know, just because there's a focus on energy doesn't mean and it should not impact your production in a negative way if it's done correctly. The other thing you want to look at is what is not only your annual energy usage, but what is your future annual energy usage and costs going forward? Looking at it historically is fine, but the market is changing and changing radically. And so certainly that's an area that uh, you need to be mindful of with that as well. Um, so I, I certainly think you know that has to be factored as you go forward. I'm going to now talk about uh, something that we ask customers to provide us with, or if they can't do it, we will do it ourselves for them. And that is, we really need to understand when growers build a greenhouse, typically the people who are developing the development of that uh, greenhouse provide a, a greenhouse energy balance. And so what does that mean is you look at the the actual design, the, 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 the framework of the actual greenhouse, you look at the crop and the crop requirements and the energy requirements. So we really want to know what are the input costs associated with the greenhouse. And so certainly we want a maximization of, of sun when required in the winter or how to help mitigate that in, in the summer and we want to actually help optimize the boiler. So those, those are input energy, and we need to have a sense of how your infrastructure and your growing impacts that. Oops, sorry, let me just go back. Okay, we got a glitch here, there we go. Um, then the other part we want to know is what are the, what are the uh, heat, where, where are you losing heat? Where is that coming from? Is there a way of helping mitigate that process as well? So in summary, if the, if the customer can provide this information for us to sort of get a, a, an understanding of their current status to get a baseline, then we can use that to figure out how well the customer is operating their procedure. So that, that's uh, one of the things that we like to get from customers. And if they can't provide that, then we will actually do it for them. It's quite a, a detailed process. And in fact, I can tell you, uh, certainly in certain jurisdictions, that uh, energy balance, when it's done um, by someone like a professional, I guess, the utilities will help pay for that audit uh, that's being done. So bear with me, I'm going the wrong way here, apologize. Okay. So once the energy balance is figured out and we, we understand where energy is consumed, 360 in, uh, does an internal uh, process where we'll start asking questions, viewing what customers are doing and what they're not doing. And we develop a scorecard on where we think customers are doing things well and what things they aren't doing. So in this particular example, this scorecard identifies in green what the customer is currently doing and the ones in gray or in black in your screen 
isn't things that they are doing. And, and, and we know when all of these things are done, that there's a potential of 25% savings that can be achieved. Now, to be clear, some things can't and may not be able to be done because of your organization, but, but these 60 best practices, when they're done, they do achieve a measurable savings uh, for our clients. So the, the first thing uh, based on that scorecard is we look at process improvements, meaning what are, are you doing in your operation that you could actually uh, do better and, and, and that you didn't know that you were doing or that there is an opportunity that you could do it better. And you, in this process, uh, we've experienced when we've done this work with clients over three to four years that there can be up to 20% savings just by looking at optimizing how you operate your facility in cooperation with energy. That, and these are, not, these are not high capital based projects. These are knowledge based projects and making sure that practices are being done within the organization and that different people, whether it's the grower, whether it's the owner operator, they are taking, taking on steps to fulfill during the year, during different periods, and making sure this is done and, and there's measurable savings associated with that. Uh, I, I can give you an example of, of where one of our growers that we work with, they, they literally measure energy every day and they can tell uh, in the next day if someone didn't close the curtains properly and they can tell how much energy they lost. It's, there's really simple things. It's just practices that customers have never done or never understood what to do and, and the value behind it. So this, this is certainly an area of focus that we work on with customers. It does provide pretty quick savings. And as I suggested to you earlier, it's not highly capital intensive. It's really more operationally based, but you need to understand how you operate by using that energy balance as well. So uh, there are a number of best practices that we work with organization with, and we make sure that this is undertaken and done on an annual basis. Again, all these items are measurable. They all can be done and checked on. So this is an area of focus that we, we can and, and suggest for customers to undertake to, to optimize their operating costs. So now that let's say you've, you've done what we call the low hanging fruit. And, and by the way, that low hanging fruit doesn't happen overnight. It, it's, there's some education required, but what else is next? What, what else can a, a, a customer do to actually help them move forward? And that is, there's the second tier and the third tier. And one is being more, we, we call it um, a process and, and, and project-based. And that is, it takes a little more capital involved to figure that out. So B is an ad adaption with midterm investment. That means not as significant investment as the long-term strategy. Um, so we will work with customers to figure out what impact that might have. So that could be from changing the curtains on in your operation to lighting changes, uh, what on the boiler, if there's a modification to the boiler, what could be done to improve it? How, what impact does CHP have versus what you're currently doing? Um, and so those are things that are looked at and examined and we do what ifs and work through the customer on the viability of doing it and then actually help them implement and execute and measure that going forward. The same thing, a long-term strategy where we start helping them design um, their, their, what they're looking at. Most people rely on the Dutch to do uh, planning and de designing that, but we get involved to help figure out with that design, the impact that has on their operating cost versus their, their uh, capital cost. And that seems to provide significant dividends to customers going forward. So I now know that uh, when we talk about the changes that are going on in the industry, uh, cert certainly lighting is becoming more and more required um, in, the, uh, in the vegetable. And that's why there's significant growth uh, in the uh, Ontario area, specifically Southwestern Ontario. Uh, and so customers are now 
viewing one, not only putting lighting, lighting in, but what type of lighting should they be using? LED has a very, uh, it might be more efficient, but it's costly. It does it, will it impact my actual amount of heat that I need versus uh, if I use HPS if, and uh, versus LED. Um, so there's a lot of things that customers uh, are, are grappling with and trying to figure out what they can do and how we can do it. And certainly when, the, when we get involved with the energy balance and do what if scenarios, whether it's LEDs and figuring out how it impacts, customers get a better understanding of truly how it impacts. And, and being a third party, we're not involved in encouraging someone to buy uh, equipment because we're actually not selling the equipment. We're working on your behalf to provide oversights to guide you on what is the best way to do going forward. Uh, and, and certainly lighting, as we said, is the future and, it, and the LEDs is becoming more mature, but when do you use it, how do you use it, what suppliers should be using. And then with the advent in just recent announcements in, in Leamington where black oak curtains are required, there's things that need to be considered uh, in your lighting because of that. The next thing is, and, and, and I talked just on this just now, is that black oak curtains are uh, because of regulations and requirements in different regions. And this isn't just in Ontario, but certainly there's, there's uh, requirements in Western Canada as well on amount of light that can uh, permeate in the evening. And so uh, if you are, need your lights and you will need to require black oak curtains, how do you operate your operation with black oak curtains? Because won't that increase the temperature? What does it do to your humidity? Again, we get involved in a very early stage to help identify customers, what that means to them and what options are available to them to help mitigate the operating cost and operating issues for production, but also what capital cost impact it has. So this is something instead of waiting and, and, and putting the black oak curtains and seeing what it does, we actually can get in front of it and help guide the customer on what options can be considered before they make that capital investment. So they're, they're ahead of the game. We actually think uh, by undertaking this, you'll be a, a year ahead of the, your competitors that don't factor this going forward. Now there's uh, in, again, certain jurisdictions, there seems to be a limitation of uh, capacity, whether it's natural gas or electricity. Uh, this particular example, um, 360 Energy is involved with the, uh, the independent electricity system operator here in Ontario, where we're working with uh, Hydro One, uh, OGVG, and University of Windsor, and working with a variety of growers to see what options are available to them if grid power is not available, because they still want to grow, and they want to grow uh, to, to, to expand their marketplace but they don't want the grid to negate or limit them. And so we are now involved with these uh, variety of, of parties and partners to identify what options are available um, based on our knowledge and our experience with customers. That information will be invaluable because not only will this be something that needs to be factored in Ontario, but we know this will be a factor that will also occur in other jurisdictions going forward. It can actually be the opposite way. We actually think in Western Canada, there could be an opportunity to encourage more lighting available in the West because of the excess supply. And, and if that's the case, what, what uh, pricing should it be to encourage customers to use lighting in Western Canada? Um, this is probably not on people's radar screen, uh, certainly right now with the price of natural gas, the way it's set up. Uh, but certainly we believe the way things are being discussed on uh, greenhouse gases and the impact of fossil fuels, that uh, sustainable energy sources will be required. And I know in the Netherlands, there's a requirement already by 2030 to stop using natural gas for their new greenhouses. So I, I do believe we will be following this pathway and, uh, and there are some customers that I know are online uh, that have used biomass in the past, but I think uh, you'll have to look at future energy supply. And so the question is, what do you use? When do you use it? 
and who should you work with to undertake that? This is a kind of a longer term strategy, but I think it may come sooner to greenhouse growers than they may want to know or understand that that could happen. So what should you do? What, what's the summary of what I'm saying to you as a grower? I think the most important thing is growers really need to understand their energy usage and what costs. And I, I, I want to use all utilities. I want to use natural gas. I want to use electricity. I want to use water. I want to use uh, CO2. Really look at this and truly understand what your status is and the trending that that uh, because of your changes in your operation, how are how are you how is your usage and your cost structure impacting you, and what are the upcoming regulations that may impact that cost structure going forward? I'm going to also encourage you to look at the energy balance that has been done by the designer of your greenhouse. Pull that out, start looking at that, and and, and that can be used as a, a baseline to figure out how much energy you consumed. And then see how much you're consuming on that baseline versus what you're really consuming. And you might be surprised that you're consuming more than what the energy baseline is. And that means there's opportunities of achieving savings. Another area that I think we, we encourage customers to do is to establish key performance indicators regarding energy is, is, is understand the amount of energy per square meter there may be a variety of KPIs, but but it's got to be measured. And if it's not measured, then it's not managed. And so we uh, encourage and, and put this in place so customers can tell month to month what their status is and if there's any tra trending uh, variances and why that happens, what actions can be done. The last thing that I'm going to say to you here is um, there's a variety of incentives. I, I myself uh, was involved with the utility industry for almost 10 years back in 1995. Most uh, customers were driven based on incentives. I'm saying to you, don't make a decision based on incentives. Do it based on your particular needs. Same for a supplier, meaning so I've heard customers go a direction because that's what the supplier said, that's what they do because that's the only equipment they have. I'm encouraging customers like yourself to drive what you want from suppliers, not suppliers drive what they want to give you. That's the magic behind that. It's really important for you to capitalize. What you shouldn't do. Um, so I think it's really important that you understand uh, really your energy requirements going forward, the costs uh, and, and your capabilities. Meaning, do you have capacity if you're going to expand? Do you have the capacity to get water because of that expansion? How much natural gas do you have or electricity? Don't, don't assume just because you're currently hooked up to the grid in some fashion that that's going to be made readily available and made readily available quickly. So you really need to do some homework when you do this. Understand, uh, don't, don't rely on what you hear from what other growers do. Yes, they're great information. But remembering when I said everyone operates a little differently, so it's good to understand what they're doing, but don't make your decisions uh, strictly on using, uh, hearing what you hear from other growers. And the last thing is, it's really important that you understand alternative options. Don't just look at one option. I encourage customers to look at a variety of options before they make their decision and, and truly understand the impact energy has in those options. I, uh, one thing you'll want to know is we do work exclusively for the customer, but we do collaborate and work with our customer and their suppliers. So uh, it's we want to ensure the suppliers uh, are, are get they receive the information appropriately, or that the information is given to them in such a fashion that it makes them more efficient. They don't have to search for things. We know sometimes uh, suppliers may know not know energy markets or understand the implication of energy markets. So having that knowledge, because of that's what we do, we understand markets, that would be helpful when suppliers are looking at technology for different customers. And because we work in a lot of different areas, there's sometimes some supplier in the, in the supply chain that we can team other suppliers up if they're trying to provide a solution to customers. So yes, we're focused on the customer, but uh, we, we work as a bridge between the customer and their suppliers. And we want to make sure the relationship between suppliers 
and the customers are good and long lasting that serves the customer best as well. So how can 360 Energy help greenhouses? Well, I think Julie stated this at the beginning, it's really important you understand we are completely independent. We have been in business for 25 years and have dealt with a lot of different things. We're not just focusing on commodity. We're not just focused on technology. We're not just focused on energy efficiency. We're looking at the whole thing and holistically, and we're looking at how it impacts the customer and how it provides measurable savings to the customer. Uh, we also have a lot of uh, ongoing uh, discussions and relationships with the government, utilities. We've already talked about suppliers. Uh, certainly what governments do, whether it's federal, provincial, and utilities, what they do or don't do impacts what options you have. So we, we are, act as a, 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 an agent on your behalf to talk uh, for them and then to bring back information to you or send information to them based on what you want. We certainly will help you negotiate uh, solutions and options that meet your specific needs. Uh, and that's really very, very important. It's gotta be based on your requirements. Um, we know with the expansion of greenhouses and, and some of the activity going on, a lot of uh, banks are looking for financial data and, and we can provide input to you and your accounting firm. So when they're providing performance statements, the information regarding energy, the second uh, largest input cost is accurate and you have that information. Uh, when we do help customers and we achieve measurable savings, it does enhance your cash flow on a monthly basis. So that, that will be a, a benefit. And the last part, which um, you know, is, is obviously the energy, we will analyze that, but we'll also look at carbon data and that information you will start finding will start playing a role in financial institutions loaning money to organizations like yourself. So that's an area as an independent party, we can help you and give that information to the financial institutions to help them figure out the credit and the risk and possible rewards that you can get by borrowing from them as well. Um, the last item I'm going to uh, is a number of seminars. These are five steps. We're going, we plan to hold uh, a variety of seminars that are going to go into great detail in each of these. We're going to be encouraging different suppliers to work with us to actually present these topics. Um, so uh, if you'll stay, stay tuned, you will start hearing more and more information particular to this. And I know we also have a trusted uh, advisor report that goes out uh, once or twice a month that updates the market. Uh, certainly uh, stay tuned to that. Uh, we are undertaking a study across North America to look at the different energy uh, sources and the pricing variables for greenhouses uh, throughout uh, North America. So that should be quite an interesting paper showing you electrical costs throughout North America. Uh, you may be able to benchmark yourself in comparison to other jurisdictions. So that, that's, uh, that's it in a nutshell. Uh, certainly there's a lot of material that was covered. If there's any questions, certainly you can ask us now, uh, but if there's questions afterwards that you feel, feel please feel free to reach out to uh, us. Uh, I've got a, a strong team behind me that knows a lot about the greenhouse industry and certainly if uh, they can't answer, uh, I can certainly jump in and help out as well. So. I think that's it for, for now, Julie. I'll, I'll pass it over to you and see if there's any questions. All right, uh, thanks, Dave. Yeah, we do have uh, a couple of questions and just a reminder for people that uh, may have uh, joined since the beginning of the presentation, um, there is a questions function on the, uh, the toggle for the webinar. Um, we do keep everybody muted just to kind of reduce background noise during the webinar itself. Um, to start off though, we've got some questions that have come in. Um, so the first one here is, uh, from an energy perspective, what do you think will have the greatest positive impact on greenhouses? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I'm going to say to you, it's what I stated at the very beginning, is if you have the mindset that energy is controllable, that's the first thing that needs to be considered. And I would also suggest to you that uh, this requires a variety of people to be uh, engaged, uh, to be energy literate. 
And to be involved in the decision making, I wouldn't be relying on supplier on its own. I, I, I would have a variety of people involved. And the third thing I would say is to make sure you put these sort of management processes within your organization so you can see what your current status is and what changes you're having and how it impacts your operation. So th those would be, uh, there's a lot of other things, but I think those three would be uh, suffice based on that question. All right, thanks, Dave. Um, the next one we have, uh, do you see any emerging trends with respect to how greenhouses manage energy? Yes, I, I think this gone this gone quite cyclical, meaning um, in the past when, when natural gas costs were like $14, $15 a GJ, uh, growers were really all over this, uh, but because of the advent of natural gas being so cheap, um, they've actually lost a little uh, focus for good reason, and they're putting it into their production. But now that they're using more electricity, and electricity, uh, you can't store it. Uh, each jurisdiction is unique. Each jurisdiction is different. So I think the 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 really focusing on uh, electricity and looking at the impact of how electricity impacts the whole operation, I think that will be really important. For, for customers to, to think about uh, going forward. So in summary, I, I think uh, energy has been low cost. I think it's low priority, but I think because of the upcoming changes in not only the greenhouse industry, where they're going to lighting, I think the advent of carbon and carbon uh, requirements will put even put more pressure for growers to be more active in managing energy as well. Okay, um, we have one more question, unless some other ones uh, come in while I'm asking this or when you're answering. Um, so based on your customer experiences, uh, do you see any regional commonalities that affect all greenhouses? Yeah, it's uh, it, it's interesting because we do work in, in, in so many different jurisdictions. Um, so I would say whether you're in a regulated or deregulated industry, like deregulated might seem more complex, but even in regulated industries, I, I find that actually uh, customers are not well versed on energy um, rates, how their usage can be impact rates, rate options. Um, so I guess in summary, uh, the 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 idea or the concept that most customers think that energy isn't controllable and because of that they don't focus on it uh, as often as they should they might they might spend a lot of time in designing a greenhouse to uh, optimize the cost but they don't actually uh, focus on operation on optimizing it so i i think that that is a consistent uh scenario that i find that most greenhouses uh whether it's regular or deregulated uh do or don't do go on on energy. All right, uh, thanks, Steve. Um, that is actually all the questions we've got. Uh, but as Dave said, um, just a reminder, if anybody does have any further questions, um, things that they would like to discuss with us, uh, please do feel free to reach out to Dave, myself, or any of the others at 360 Energy, and we can most definitely uh, help uh, help you get an answer to your question. And Julie, I uh, I know that the, there was some polls that were to be taken. I recognize that uh, I blew past all of them. <laughs> um, so if it's something that we can send out to uh, people that watch this, I think that would be helpful and we can give them that feedback if that's possible too. So uh, if we can get those polls set up and, and give customers mm -hmm. feedback based on the polls, that'd be helpful. All right. Um we'll go ahead and do that. So without any further ado, I wanna thank everybody for attending today. Um, we will have a recording of this webinar available on our website uh, in the very near future. So keep an eye out for that. Um, but uh, yeah, just wanted to thank everybody for your time and Dave, thank you for a great presentation today. And uh, we hope to be talking to everybody soon. So yeah, th thank you, Julie. And everyone have a great day and we'll, we'll be in touch soon. Thank you. All right, take care, bye.